Hi everyone, welcome back to the more popular, long-awaited Tarantula Mythbuster video. I cannot wait to do one. It's been so excited to actually make one and rekindle back an old favorites of mine. So these Tarantula Mythbuster videos mainly serve as care sheets and what you need to know from A to Z about a particular species. Now today I'm going to be doing most of the Holotheli species but I'm really going to spend more time on the Holotheli Insi. Now this is a species that I've worked with over for four years and I haven't really worked with the other ones so I'm not really comfortable enough to make a Mythbuzzer video on the other species but if I were to assume um, most of the species like the Caribou, uh, Yanayaku, uh, Columbia, Norte Santador, uh, commonly called NDS, will typically have the same care sheet. So let's get started, shall we? So this is the very first topic we're going to talk about. What are the names of this particular tarantula? Now the common name, thank goodness there's only one of them. As you can tell, I'm not really a fan of these common names. Uh, it's called the Trinidad Olive scientifically named Holotheli Insi, and this is how we pronounce it. Whole lo fel li Insi. So it's a pretty easy name to figure out. So uh, I do want to show you some pictures on the internet. There are, it says two different color forms. Uh, the H Insi gold form, which is a more gold version of the normal form. So yeah, let's get started. So this is the gold form. This is what it one looks like. A much more reddish brown color, a kind of it giving it a gold appearance. Now this is the female from FOP Cambridge in 1898. Now this is the normal form. Abby looks exactly like this one. As you can see you have sort of like chevron patterns on the abdomen, a goldish bronze carapace with black highlights and sort of like a brownish green color, very similar to what you would find on the Salmopoas cambridgei, the Trinidad Chevron. Uh, now this is a mature male, this is what they look like. They do so sexual dimorphism, which means that the males and females look completely different from each other. As you can tell, his carapace is much more dark and colored and you don't really see the abdomen patterns at all. But they will possess uh, tibial hooks as few mature males do, not all of them, and all of them will have the bulbous pedipalps. And this is what a spiderling looks like. As you can see, they probably start showing their adult colors towards the one inch mark. Now, uh, this is my specimen known as Abby. Very popular tea in my feeding video. So this is a full grown female. Uh, as you can tell, Trinidad olives are dwarf species. They really don't get very large at all. So females are probably max around two to two and a half inches at the most. And males will probably be around a whopping inch to an inch and a half, half the size. Now I'm not really sure about the other holotheli species. I believe the maximum growth rate you'll see probably on an NDS will probably be around three and a half inches. So they're not really large species at all. Okay, so prices, uh, generally they range, of course. Uh, from spiderlings, you probably can get a third of an inch to about an inch for around 15 to 30 bucks, depending on who's selling them. Uh, TC is currently selling gold forms for around a third of an inch for $15. Uh, which is coincidentally the same price that I paid Abby four years ago. And mature females, uh, if you're looking at a dealer, probably in the low hundreds, uh, but if you're looking online, like say for arachnid boards, maybe 50 to 80 bucks will probably be a reasonable uh, price for one. Uh, since they're not fairly common in the hobby, it's a pretty cool tea that you should check out. Now, uh, the lifespans of uh, Holotheli Inseas, uh, males will live around three to five years. Uh, once they mature, they have maybe about six months left to live before they die off of natural causes. And females will probably live around 10 to 15 years. It's not a, 
long-lived species like the Grandma Sola Rosea or the Rachypelma smithi because these are a very fast-growing species. Now, Abby was a third of an inch back four years ago. I do have the video on it. I'll be posting it on the video description as well as the websites where you can look to buy uh, tarantulas online. Um, yeah, she matured, I'm not kidding you, uh, two years later in 2011 and I feed her crickets uh, mainly once every two to four weeks. So yeah, she grew fairly quickly and I don't really give her that many super worms because she's a very small tea. But uh, she loves dining on crickets. So that's what I feed them. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, about the care sheet. So pretty much this is an ideal cage setup for Holothelia inseed. They're not really a massive uh, species. I pretty much keep mine in a 16 ounce solo deli container. Just what I use for mine is I just put substrate in there and she just really took over. Now Holotheli inci is the only Holotheli inci that will web the most. The other species will just maybe web around the burrow and that's it. So you, you won't see an intense webbing as this species. Ties in with my GBB but nothing beats my C. guanciensis, the Chinese fawn. You can see how uh, her webbing is. That was intense. So yeah, this is an obligate burrower, so you want to give them a uh, deep substrate so they can burrow. As you can see, Abby is burrowed down and she's got many holes where she likes to pop in and out. <laughs> I didn't do anything to this setup, she did it all by herself. And you do want to keep it fairly moist substrate in there. I don't really offer a water dish because uh, she's a bit too small to offer one, but if you want to, a bottle cap like this will suffice. Uh, yeah, so if you don't really like this enclosure, I know a lot of get get a lot of comments from people saying that my enclosures are too small for the tea, but honestly, I think this is just more than enough uh, space for her. Uh, you can use a two liter shoebox enclosure, which is the one shown here. This is the KIS brand, so all I did was just use a soldering gun to make air holes around the perimeter of the uh, del uh, shoebox, put some substrate, a uh, small water dish, and a hide if you want to, but you don't really need a hide because uh, they're going to just burrow down themselves. So temperature, you want to keep them around room temperature, like 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You can keep them a little bit cooler, like 72 to 70, uh, 72 to 75, but don't go below uh, 65F because that's way too cold for most tarantulas and don't go over 85F because that's especially dangerous uh, because tarantulas are more susceptible to heat uh, than cold. Uh, so uh, temperament of these species, well uh, they're not aggressive at all in my experience but they have proven to be very very fast teas and you really should be careful should you try to feed them and should you try to rehouse them because <laughs> they can say, you can say what happened, and it's the tea's long gone. So, for this reason, I really don't recommend them for beginners, uh, just because of their speeds, insane. Uh, but, and you certainly can't really handle them because of their speed, because uh, the tea might fall and might rupture your abdomen, and you know that's sad news for that. So, uh, if you do want to rehouse these OHNC, Joe, just do it in an open area and make sure you block all the exits and just have a catch cup ready in case uh, he or she escapes, which most of the time that will happen. And I do believe I do have on my channel, I have to check it, one video that I did a couple of years ago uh, rehousing this particular female and this one here. Uh, showing you how fast they are. So if I do find it, I'll be putting it on the video description as well. Uh, so breeding, very easy species to breed. Um, I'm not going to lie to you, around one to two months after mating, you might see your female drop a sack. And the sacks are not really that big in number. They can be around between 100 to 200 babies. Now, what I really love about this species is that it is the best communal species out there. Whenever I asked, whenever people ask me what uh, what communal tea that you can have, or um, mainly, not really worded that way, or is there any species that I could 
possibly uh, house more than one tarantula together. So normally I told them, I tell people, you know, tarantulas you really shouldn't keep them communally because they're cannibals. You can't expect uh, them to eat each other and maybe have fights, even for the arboreal ones like Avicularia, Avicularia, or Pokies. But H. NC happens to be the best communal species out there, and most of the Holotheli species like NDS aren't. Uh, I asked TC about these NDS species, and she housed a couple of them communally, and 40% of them got eaten, so I don't want to take a chance on that. Now the reason why I would love to have a B, uh, HNC community set up, but the problem is I don't really have that much space in my tea room to actually do that. But yeah, it's it's the best. So I will show you another video um, that I posted a couple of years ago when I first went to Tarantula Canada. Uh, so basically they housed them in a 20 no I think it was a 200 gallon tank and she had a couple of hundred in there and they were doing absolutely wonders Here's a communal setup of, uh, of the Olive. there we go and you can see they, they web a lot and they burrow or they burrow too so it's not likely a species that you're gonna see out in the open all the time all right so now for my overall impression of the species what do I think of it it's an awesome species to get and you really should be getting one and no collection is complete without this Holothelli NC simply because it's the best communal species out there. Now I wouldn't recommend it for someone starting out just simply because it's very fast. Uh, not really potent at all. If you do ever get bitten by it, um, it will probably likely feel like a bee sting. It's not really dangerously potent like a pokey or any of the old world species. Uh, they do have urticating hair, but they are very unlikely to flick them. They'll just mainly run away. At least that's uh, the uh, experience I got from my cute Abigail. Uh, yeah, so... It's a fantastic species, you should buy it, and hope it helps people uh, inspire to get these species. So just be careful when you're rehousing it, and you're going to have a pretty cool looking tea. Not the most visual tea, but <laughs> it's got some impressive webbing, that's what I have to tell you. Alright, cool, so hope you enjoyed this uh, awesome Mythbuster video, guys, and it's pretty cool for me to start getting back into uh, the habit of doing this again. Uh, so I will be making one next week. I really haven't decided of what species I'll cover. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll just think about it and we'll see how it is. Maybe I might do my centipede. Yeah, maybe I'll just do a centipede uh, tarantula Mythbuster video. So yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Alright everyone, enjoy and thanks for watching.